The Tigers played their final regular season home game this past Saturday. We'll talk about it on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, which starts now, presented by the Green Turtle. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's Ice Cream Plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas, along with the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Adlin. And Coach, Saturday was the final regular season game for the Tigers at Johnny United Stadium. It was also senior day, so all of your seniors were honored. Sometimes the emotions can be too much, I don't know, but something wasn't right as the game started and all of a sudden UMass went on a blitz. Was, was there something you could sense before the game started or no? There wasn't a ton of juice in, in our warm-up. You know, the guys, they were out there, but, you know, a little sloppy with their stick work and there just wasn't, you know, there wasn't that crispness that you hope for, you know, in a pregame warm-up showing that, yes, they're excited, but they're also focused and, and they're ready to, to play a game and, um, you know, obviously we've had discussions with the guys and, you know, they really couldn't put their finger on it. Um, but it, it led to obviously a very rough first half for us against a, a very determined and, and you, uh, a very determined UMass team that was, you know, ready to play from the start. They, the game started off even. I mean, it was 1-1, then all of a sudden they went on a run. It, it was kind of reminiscent of the Cornell game earlier this season where the other team just went on this run that you couldn't stop. Um, you called a couple of timeouts. I know you tried to stop the bleeding. It's got to be a helpless feeling for a coach. Exactly. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty much how it felt. You know, we, we not that we needed to make adjustments because everything that they were doing is exactly what we practiced all week to defend against their transition to um, you know move the ball better on on the offensive end and take better you know shots you know, on the cage and in different locations and what we were doing, you know, be able to just, you know, they were dodging and getting shots from exactly where we expected them to. We just weren't sliding when we were supposed to and, and creating the double team and the, and the opportunities to create turnovers. So um, there wasn't, yeah, there wasn't like a, a magic phrase or, or anything that was going to change the outcome. It was just going to be our guys focusing up and being able to, to buckle down and actually play lacrosse the way we're capable of playing. You're down 10-2 to two at halftime. What do you say to the team at halftime down 10-2? to two? I Brought up the point, obviously, with, you know, basically felt like we, we wasted a week of practice because we didn't do anything that we worked on during the week to prepare. Uh, we didn't do anything, any of that, in, in the first half. Um, and I actually kept it short and sweet because I felt like it, it didn't need to, it, it couldn't have, 
come from us as coaches in regards to what the response needed to be for the players. It needed to come from them and it needed to come from the captains and the seniors to make sure that we came out of the locker room the right way. And um, so I, I basically I said maybe a few words and put it on the captains and seniors to determine you know, how we're going to come out of this locker room. And obviously I expect it to be the right response. Um, so the coaches, you know, we all walked out of the locker room at that point and um, the team came out a few minutes later and then, you know, ran onto the field and, you know, definitely played uh, better in the third quarter and much better in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and you, you almost put a scare into them late in the game. You, you eventually closed the gap to four goals. If you had gotten to within three or two and UMass was coming off a game where they blew a lead to Hofstra late in the game last week, maybe mentally they start thinking, uh-oh, here we go again. Absolutely. You know, and I felt like, you know, obviously it was a huge deficit down eight, down nine, you know, at the end of three. Um, you know, but I felt like we just kept swinging in that fourth quarter and then, you know, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. They were definitely on their heels. They, you could tell their defense was, was worn down. We kept winning faceoffs. Alex was doing a good job there. Um, but we just couldn't, you know, couldn't string enough, you know, together in a row to, to really overcome, obviously, the, the big deficit that we built. The one thing that was odd in the statistics is you outshot them by 18, I think, your fewest turnovers of any game this year. So you took care of the ball. If I'd have told you that you would outshoot them by 18, you'd have your fewest turnovers of the year, you'd probably say, that's probably going to be pretty good for us. I would, except the fact that their goalie had 17 saves. And, uh, you know, it's just, um, he's good. There's no doubt about it. We, you know, we helped him with, with where we were shooting the ball on him. And, um, you know, he, he, he played well. You know, and, but we didn't challenge them as well as we should have either. Um, but yeah, if you look at the statistics, um, which again aren't aren't the the total, you know, tail, and um, you know we we won, you know, in regards to a lot of the statistical categories. But uh, obviously, the game play in the first half uh, didn't put us in position to to win the game. Now you're three quarter, three fifths of the way through the conference season. You sit at two and one. Um, what do you say to the team this week to get them refocused and, and get back to where you were earlier in the season? We have to obviously identify um, the issue and, and why we started out so slow, why we did nothing that we wanted to do in the first half in regards to a game plan, and obviously identify those issues, correct them, and then you know be able to, to push forward and practice. You know, I felt like there was a lack of energy and, and emotion in regards to playing the game and starting it off, and then that was worrisome. So trying to, you know, understand that within the team and then how we can obviously correct ourselves that way um, and be ready to compete, you know, right from the start. Uh, we have a midfield group that is not doing a great job uh, shooting, uh, and they need to work more, and they need to put more time and effort into it. Um, you know, when your first midfield's only shooting at 18%, you know, that's pretty worrisome and you know those guys need to, to take it upon themselves to get more reps um, and to be sharper in what they're doing on the field and we need to dive into the game plan fully understand it and then be able to and ready to execute it on game day and um, obviously that was uh, a big issue for us on, on Saturday. So the Tigers will try to regroup this week they'll take on the Delaware Blue Hens on Saturday up in Newark and uh, tune in later on this week when the coach and I will talk about the matchup with the first place Delaware Blue Hens. So for the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report brought to you by the Green Turtle. And as always, go Tigers.